But today I will be sharing with you vulnerability as a superpower. Why is, why is this important? Like, why does someone want to be more vulnerable? Like, how does this help you out in your career? So I'll share the 10 steps or 10 things about vulnerability that could help you uh, be able to just have a more fulfilling and um, just be able to optimize for a better life to, to have good friends and, and good people around. So check this out. If you feel like you're your own worst critic and you're being really hard, hard with yourself and you want to be able to just have more peace of mind and be able to have more confidence, this LinkedIn Live will help you get there. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the, the comments below. And uh, yeah, oh man, it's so weird. It's, even though you do a lot of these LinkedIn Lives, it's always uncomfortable to, to do live streaming sometimes. So I'll share with you why I think uh, vulnerability is a superpower. And uh, the topics will be around identity, being kinder to ourselves, being our own worst enemy, how to um, reach our full potential and how to squash some of that self-criticism as well and how to become our best, our biggest cheerleaders. So, all right, well, let's get right into it. So the first step to be able to just be kinder with yourself is just to be able to reflect on your journey and your accomplishments, right? The, the first step is to write it down and celebrate them because a lot of times we are on the hamster wheel, we're on to the next goal, we're always trying to get to the next, the next, the next thing, the next promotion, buying a house, getting a nice, getting a nice car, getting married, having kids and stuff like that. But really when we're present to it, there's always gold in every failure. So when things aren't going so well, it's good to just take a step back and, and reflect on like, huh, which things has, which things give us energy and which things are draining our, our, our resources and our energy. So uh, I'll give you an example. Back in college, uh, so let me see, so I was like 19, 20 years old. I was working at a, a company. I was working at the Rutgers Cell and DNA Lab that I got through the career fair. And I made the mistake of like, I would I would literally skip class to work at the DNA Lab because I was just so hungry for money. In reality, I wasn't really thinking long-term. Like I was just like, oh, I don't like school and I, I like working. But one of the two managers that were like kind of responsible for me, they they spoke and they saw that, hey, like Davidson has these classes, like how is he able to work? Like why isn't he clocking out, right? And I wasn't able to, I was too afraid of conflict to defend myself. And because of that, I ended up getting let go from that job. I mean, everything happens for a reason, so I don't think about it too much now, but I do regret like because of my avoidance of conflict, I ended up making a horrible decision that led to me getting cut from the job, even though it was like such an amazing job at the time. And I, I enjoyed uh, the social component of it. So the moral of the story there is to just stand up for yourself. Like, don't be afraid to speak up for yourself. And if you're avoiding conflict, um, it's it's good to be able to acknowledge like your achievements and be able to just own your your greatness. And I think this is important. Um, so my the question for you that I have is, where have you let others decide your future, and where are you not standing up for yourself? Right? It could be in your marriage. It could be with your family, your parents, your boss. Right? Just being able to stand up for yourself and being able to be grounded in who you are and the value that you provide is, is extremely important. So step two is uh, how to silence our inner critic. So, you know, I, this is something that takes courage to say, but, you know, growing up, I was very insecure. Like I would always compare myself to like my taller, quote unquote, better looking counterparts, taller white counterparts. And I would, instead of focusing on, oh, I didn't, I didn't get as many girls or whatever. It's like, well, why don't I focus on the good, the positive that did happen in my life instead of being so focused on the negative aspects. Right. So, so for instance, if I look back at high school, 
I can either look at high school and be like, oh, yeah, you know, I didn't get good grades or, you know, I was ranked 123 out of 430 students. Like there was 122 people that did better than me. Or I could focus on like the positive aspect, right? It's like, oh, I was pretty popular. I had a lot of friends and I did date a lot of women in middle school and in high school. So it's like the same exact experiences, but one, I'm so focused on what didn't go well and how I sucked at X, Y, Z and et cetera. Or I could focus on, hmm, I got invited to six or seven different proms. I ended up meeting so many incredible human beings and I was proud and I should be proud of myself versus, oh, um, you know, Davidson, you didn't, and then this is my self-talk, you didn't tell this girl that you had a crush on her or whatever. It's it's like, it's good to be reflective, but when it when it's affecting your confidence, just be cognizant of the stories that you end up telling yourself. So now that I've done more therapy and self-development, I could really focus on, okay, did I do the best I can in terms of like, did I really like try my best to um, appreciate all of my experiences, whether it was my last job or every year of my life, like I could look at it with appreciation or I could look at it as like, oh, I, I've failed, quote, unquote. Um, okay, cool. So the next day, the next step is number three is to when you, so the, the prompt I have for you all is when you look at your identity, are you focused on just the failures are you looking at both sides of what happened so that you actually have a more realistic and accurate portrayal portrayal of yourself and how do you do this uh, a lot of it is just taking an inventory um ask sometimes even asking others like hey like you know could be your old coworkers or your old classmates or your teachers like what are my strengths and weaknesses? And just look at everything as a data point. Like don't over course correct. Don't be so hard on yourself. Uh, step three, being able to set realistic goals and then more importantly, break them down to smaller achievable goals, right? Because let's say my goal is to travel to a hundred different countries. Well, if I'm, that seems like a very unobtainable goal, but if I just break it down to like, okay, let's say I'm 37 and in the next 60, like, let's say I live to that. I'm like at the halfway point, right? Let's say I live to 74. Um, it's like, okay. So if I go to three different countries every year that I'd be able to reach my goals, right? Like that makes it so much more obtainable and so much more doable versus having like this huge goal that seems so massive. So I think it's important to realize like, are my goals because I'm trying to fix myself or do I generally just want to experience like travel and the riches of life? And, and just and one it's, it could be that I'm leading with curiosity or if I'm trying to like prove myself and not have the self-awareness around that, then that's going to be like a lot more difficult. And it's just a lot more, um, it's more of a confronting thing. So when you break it down to small goals, it's very simple, but it's it's going to be a lot easier to achieve them. So number four, this is the hardest for most people, which is just being able to embrace vulnerability and just share openly about some of your challenges. So um, this is, you know, being a content creator, I would say this is probably the hardest thing that I, I still personally struggle with, even though I'm making content every day. Um, the reality is like, not there's not as many people paying attention as you think there is so sometimes we are afraid to put ourselves out there because we're like oh everyone's gonna know what's going on but the reality is everyone's stuck in their own world so you think that they're thinking about you but the reality is like everyone's too busy focusing on themselves and, and their family or their spouse or whatever so you know when you share on social media like don't just share all of the highlight reels like yes of course it's it's great to show like hey you know i did this i won this award i got this this certification but when you're sharing that also share about like some of the challenges so it's like hey like this you know i got my mba but honestly like 
you know, thank you, my thank you to my wife for being so supportive of me. Like, thank you to the administration. Like, I think when we leave with gratitude, it it goes a long way, and we'll just be happier people as well when we leave with gratitude. So, um, that's what, and I would say, at the end of the day, we're all humans, right? Uh, one of my my mentors, um, one of my coaches, Ian Koniak. I remember when he spoke in uh, Austin, Texas, in front of the top 1% of salespeople, you know, we were, I was just shocked at how vulnerable he was to share openly about his addiction and, and his substance abuse and all these different things. And it just made him so relatable. And that's why I ended up working with one of the reasons why I ended up working with him. So uh, step five, surround yourself with positivity. This is, this is important because I, I do think we, it's, it's corny what they say, but we're the average of the five people we spend the most time with, right? So let's say I spend a lot of time with my wife. You know, she has a big, beautiful heart and her priority is going to be like working on the marriage, right? So if I am not cognizant, I end up spending time with people who maybe aren't the best um, people that I, if I want to have a more productive life, like maybe those people aren't the best people to, to spend a lot of time with, right? So let's say um, I'm spending a lot of time with folks who are like getting wasted every weekend. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to be like tired and wake up one day and be like, man, like, why do I feel so like empty? Like, why do I feel so superficial? You know, versus if let's say I'm hanging out with, um, you know, I'll just mention some names like Venus O'Hara or, um, you know, a lot of the folks that I that I've met recently in the podcast world, it's it's they're they're very inspirational and I'm able to just be inspired and I'm able to take action, right? Versus if I'm spending times like I unfortunately I had some friends that passed away, but if I spent if I continue down that path, like who knows what would have happened, you know. But I do think it's important to also be cognizant of false positivity. I, I think it's important to honor yourself and, you know, just be able to set boundaries, right? Like if, if you're surrounded by negativity and the family is not a healthy environment, then, then do something about it, right? If your family is toxic and you're not getting a lot of energy from that, then hang out with different friends. Like, yeah, they're your family, but at the end of the day, you have to take care of yourself and do what's best for you, so... Um, the, the next, so that's step five, surround yourself with positivity. You know, I, I just want to, to acknowledge that, um, setting boundaries is important, is difficult for a lot of people. Um, especially like folks that come from immigrant families when you're literally like living on top of each other. So setting boundaries is an, a common theme that I've noticed a with a lot of my Vietnamese American clients and, and just folks that come from immigrant families. So once you practice that, that usually helps out a lot in terms of honoring your truth. Uh, number six, practice self-compassion. So I want, I want us to share this because I do think many of us are our own worst critic. And there's a lot of things that I have said to myself that I wouldn't ever say to any of my friends. For instance, you know, when I bomb an interview, I'm like, oh, like you sucked. Like you could have done a better job. Like just a lot of negative self-talk, right? Versus when I talk to my friends, I'd be like, you know what? You should be proud of yourself to be able to make it as far as you have or to be able to have all these opportunities. And so an easy practice is just what would you, what advice would you give to your friend? And then just give that advice to yourself. So let's say... I'm going through a situation where I was I was burnt out and I had to take a month off to like just re just to relax and take care of my well being right with my friends I'd be like you know what uh Josh or Edwin I'm proud of you like that you took some time to yourself and you were able to rest up and and that that's a great thing so practice being kind with yourself by giving yourself advice that you would give your friend. It's a simple practice, but it goes a long way. Um, 
I've been fortunate enough to have interviewed maybe 700 people in my lifetime, just going up to random strangers, executives, like people from all walks of life. And what I realized is we all have an attachment to our identity that's based on the past. So for instance, let's say I'm really attached to like, let's say I'm like really focused on being like Asian American, right? And like, all I'm looking through the lens is like, oh, this person is not good to like Asian Americans. So obviously I'm going to collect evidence that proves my story true, right? Versus like, let's say my identity, like let's say my old identity was I'm broke, I'm not healthy and I'm gaining weight. And like, that's just how I am. Like, I'm just like a quiet person. I'm a lazy person, right? I like, we all have our own version of that attachment. Like some of mine would be like, oh, well, I'm just not aggressive or I'm like afraid, I'm afraid to ask for the clothes or something like that. Let's say that's like my disempowering context. Well, it's interesting, right? It's like, is this necessarily true? Let's say I'm naturally um, extroverted and I I struggle with like sitting down with myself and meditating. So if I have an if I have an attachment towards my identity being like, well, I'm just hyper, then of course I'm gonna do that. But if like my new identity, let's say my identity is like a more empowering way to reframe that would be, hey, naturally I'm a people person, but I'm currently working on loving myself and being more introspective and being more reflective and more more strategic about things. Then it's like, oh, okay, that's a much more empowering identity where the identity there, it's like, hey, I'm coachable. I'm willing to learn new skills and I'm willing to be uncomfortable. Much, much more powerful identity. So number eight is the eighth step to being kinder with yourself is just the visual visualization, right? This sounds really corny, but you know, whether it's becoming a YouTuber, a podcaster, a public author, creating everything, traveling the world, right? It all starts with you envisioning like what's possible. That could be through listening to podcasts and listening to other successful people. It could be watching Alex Hermosi. It could be going to these conferences and seeing people at the front of the stage and then visualizing like, oh, I could see myself emceeing that event one day, right? But it, it, you have to believe it within yourself first. And the easiest way to do that is to close your eyes and then just reflect back to like the happiest moments you've had. So let's say I close my eyes and I'm like, oh, Lewis Howe's uh, Summit of Greatness. We were all banging on the, doing drumming while we were, we were introducing like these famous influencers. And like, I was able to learn from like the most inspirational people like Ed Milet then I could visualize like, oh, what would it be like if I was able to interview Ed Milet on my podcast or like Tony Robbins? What if I, what if I met some of my role models, like Rich Roll, right? What would that be like? So that wouldn't be possible unless you actively believed in that yourself, but it starts with yourself. So what's helpful is just to have a vision board where you can just create um, I have one on the side where I put all of my happy moments and then it's easy. Like if I'm feeling this mo not motivated, I could just look at my vision board and be like, ah, amazing. When I was at this EDM event, it was amazing. Like when I interviewed this guest, when I interviewed this executive, it was amazing. Right. And the more and more you can kind of like understand what emotions got you there and the things that make, made you happy and what makes you most fulfilled, the more likely you're able to all of this to happen. So the ninth step in being kinder with yourself and be able to accomplish more things is just to seek feedback and learn. So sometimes we look at feedback and we over course correct. I think it's important to look for mentorship and be able to hire coaches and just, you know, listen to podcasts like people who really inspire you. But don't be afraid to ask them for candid feedback, right? Like if I'm meeting, you know, one of my mentors, uh, Tommy Chan, like he's very upfront and he's just like, hey, like get better at saving. And like, you know, sometimes you don't want to hear those things, but getting feedback is important. And if you really want to move, you want to be more successful, the more data points you should collect. And the key is to also honor your truth, honor yourself. But let's say I asked 165 people, hey, what are my strengths and weaknesses? 
after you hear, hey, you have positive energy or you're good at bringing people together, like if you hear that 165 times, like that just really validates like, okay, this is my secret sauce. But that's scary, right? That takes vulnerability. That, that takes sometimes people being like, what do you, what is this for? Like, this is weird. No one has ever asked me before. But if you, let's say you want to get into management one day, like, let's say I want to be a director of sales. Like, of course, I'm going to like reach out to other sales directors and ask them for feedback, right? Like what, you know, what was your journey like? like what do you see are some areas of opportunity for me to work on? Um, versus like, sometimes we take feedback from like people who aren't necessarily qualified. Like, like, let's say I'm writing on Reddit and there's like 50 good comments and like a handful of negative comments. Many of us will focus on the handful of negative comments. And it's like, uh, and there's probably some truth to what they're saying, but Dude, at the end of the day, you can choose whether or not you implement it or not. So just be cognizant of that. Uh, step 10 on how to be kinder to yourself and how to accomplish more is just sharing, like just sharing your journey, being open and vulnerable, like what's going on through your head? What, you know, why has it been so hard for, why has the economy, how has the economy been affecting you? What are you doing about it, Right. If we're if we're doing things just for the validation of others, then people could sense that and they'll be repelled by that energy. But if we're doing it because like we generally want to help people, good things will come your way, even if you don't feel like it. If you keep putting your best foot forward and you keep doing what you do best, eventually everything will work out. But that takes being able to share openly about your journey. And sometimes you're like, well, what do I have to say that's different? It, dude, it doesn't even have to be different. You can just be saying the same thing everyone else has been saying, but because you're a female or maybe you're a person of color, like because you're Asian, you're black, you're Latinx, whatever it is, right? It might resonate with different people just because of how you deliver it or just, you know, timing is everything. You know, basically all the self-development programs it's all the same thing, but sometimes I hear it from someone else. Like, let's say I hear from Amber about imposter syndrome and I'm like, wow, like that really resonated with me, but someone could be saying the same exact thing. And then someone else would be like, I don't get it. So just honor yourself. Uh, stop chasing the dopamine hit of like, just seeming so focused on the metrics. If you're aiming to become like a YouTuber and you want to become famous, like It'll happen if you are grounded in who you are. You're really trying to serve people, trying to build community, and you're adding value, right, at the end of the day. So I know I said a lot today. Um, in, in conclusion, if I was to summarize, like, the 10 major points, build community, add value, get feedback from mentors, coaches, therapists, et cetera, do these self-development programs, visualize your your community and your accomplishments like what is it like to win a new york times bestseller you know was it like to to break my record on the mile right like what is the feeling like like who am i high-fiving like who am i texting and who's going to be there with me you know when i just completed my ultra marathon like just when you visualize these things it's more likely to happen uh number seven i'm going backwards number seven um, celebrate yourself, celebrate the small wins, break it down to very, very small goals. And then you're, you're able to have a higher probability of obtaining that. Number six, uh, stop beating yourself up, practice self-compassion, which means, um, being able to be able to see what the reality is versus like our negative interpretation of what happened. And sometimes that does take, like reflection. Sometimes we real realize it eventually. Uh, number five, being able to set boundaries, being able to surround yourself with people who you aspire to be like. If let's say you're trying to publish a book, hang out with a lot of authors. Let's say you're trying to be shredded and get to like 6% body fat, hang out with people who are, you know, look really, really good uh, physically, right? Number four, embrace, embrace vulnerability. So just share, be open. No one's actually paying attention to you. Like they're too focused on themselves. So just share. You'll be shocked at what you can create just from just sharing openly about what's going on in your life. And people want to help you out too, right? So the more you share, the more help you'll get from folks. Uh, number uh, Step three is being able to break it down to very, very 
like small goals. So then the smaller, the better. So let's say my goal is like, all right, I want to travel to Fiji. It's like, okay, for a Tony Robbins conference, what would that look like? Okay, I need to save up $7,000 for this, $5,000 for the ticket, $2,000 for room and board. And let's say it's $7,000. It's like, okay, how am I going to make that $7,000? Okay, right now, let's say I'm making $100,000 a year. It's like, uh, in order to have that much disposable income, I would need to get a raise of like 30, I need to make $35,000 more, right? Let's just say, it's like, okay, how would I do that? It's like, okay, well, I would need to get a, I would need to obtain a job that, let's just say has a base of 90 K and another commission is 45 K. Right. It's like, once you break it down, it's a lot easier. Um, number two, being able to silence our inner critic. Um, so basically this is just looking at the reality of what actually happened versus what we think happened. So, um, the example I used here is I was, I had a negative, I'm like, oh, I lacked confidence when I was in high school. It's like, well, is that actually true? Is that admissible in a court of law? It's like, hmm, all right. If if I was objective about this, would this be true? It's like, no, actually, objectively, I had a lot of friends. I was popular. I went to a ton of proms and I dated uh, a, a lot of women. But if I was just focused on like my survival brain, it's like, oh, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't, you know, date the 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 president of the class or whatever it is, like a lot of the self-talk that we have. Uh, step one is acknowledge our achievements. So, and being able to just stand up for yourself and be able to speak your truth and what that would look like. So if this is helpful, post uh, any, if you have any questions, post in the comments. I can make micro videos and elaborate on any of these topics if you found this to be helpful. And uh, yeah, I'll be that... I'm trying to do LinkedIn lives every week. So this is a goal of mine to get better at public speaking and be able to add value and just share what's going on uh, so that others um, don't make the same mistake I do. If you enjoyed, if you enjoyed this content, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter uh, or follow me if you're not already followed. And uh, yeah, looking forward to hearing from you all. Cheers. Cool. We are all set.